Hi, welcome to the ENS tutorial to set up the human body temperature solution camera. As you can see here, when you first connect the camera, the default IP address is going to be 192.168.1.108. When you first log into the web interface, it's going to ask you to initialize the camera, meaning you're going to set up a password first. So in this example, I set up the password to be Q1234567. Once you log in, you can tell that the, this camera is bispectrum, meaning there's two lenses. One's going to be a normal view, and one is going to be a thermal view. Now, before you set up the camera any further, one of, there's a few settings that you want to do first. So let's go to the Settings tab here. You want to first go to System, go to General, go to Date and Time, make sure the NTP server is checked. Make sure your time zone according to where you have the camera set up is correct along with the date and time. And you want to click sync IPC. In other words, sync the camera time with the computer time. The reason why you want to do that is not just to ensure the accuracy of the time, but also allows the temperature to be displayed over the person as they're walking into the camera view. Once you set this up, another thing that you want to verify first is to make sure that the camera firmware is updated as well. So make sure that you get the firmware update from your sales rep. There's going to be two firmwares that you need to upgrade. Once you get that, then what you want to do is save it to a desktop folder. And then under the system settings here, you want to go to where it says upgrade. Once you select upgrade, then you want to go to browse. And in this example, I have the firmware saved on a folder on my desktop labeled Dahua Thermal Upgrade. Now, there's going to be two pieces of firmware that you need to upgrade first. One is going to be known as General TPC, and the other one is going to be Packet Camera. So make sure that you upgrade the firmware in this order. The first one is going to be General TPC. Once that's upgraded, the camera will reboot log back in, and then upgrade the second one, which is the packet camera. Once the firmware is upgraded, then you want to go ahead and go into information, and then verify that it has been upgraded by checking the build date. First one is under system version, here the date, and also the thermal camera version. The date is here as well. Once that's been upgraded, then what you can do is underneath the camera itself, there is a little door latch that you can open. There's a physical reset button, so while the camera is still powered on, you want to hold that reset button down for 10 to 15 seconds. Once it reboots, then the camera is ready to go. Once it reboots, it's going to set back to default settings, of course. So once you're going to do, once you log back in, you're going to create another password, log back into the interface. Once you're back in the interface, then what you want to do is make sure that the live view is showing. Now, if the live view is showing black, then no problem. What you want to do is then go ahead and go into the web browser settings of Internet Explorer. Go to Internet Options. Under the Advanced tab, you want to reset the browser. Once you reset the browser, close it, reopen it, and log back in, and then the live view should be displayed. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to do this every time. This is only if the browser is not displaying any live view. But if it is displaying live view after the firmware upgrade, then there's no need to reset the browser. So this tutorial is assuming that you have the camera and the black body already installed according to the correct distance and the height. Another thing I want to mention is uh, even though the NVR is a PoE NVR, meaning you can connect the camera to the back of the NVR, it's still recommended for easier installation to have a PoE switch in the setup because you can connect the camera to the PoE switch. And then in case you need to you know, log in, because initially you have to set up the camera web interface. So if you have it plugged into a PoE switch, it's going to be a lot easier to connect a laptop to set up the settings first. Once you have all that done, then you want to go to settings. And then under settings, the first thing you want to do is, uh, after all the firmware upgrade and the system date and time, is go to network and go to TCP IP. Now keep in mind that most of the setups will include an NVR. Now the NVR itself is also going to have the default IP address of 192.168.1.108. The camera is also the same IP address by default, so there, obviously there's going to be a conflict there. So what's recommended is either change the IP address of the NVR first 
to something different like 109 or you can change the IP address of the camera to something different like 109. Once that's done, the conflict will no longer exist and then you're ready to add. After the IP address has been changed on either the NVR or the camera here, then we're going to go to the settings again. And the first thing you want to do is set up the thermal system uh, settings by going to Smart Thermal. First thing you want to do is go to Smart Plan. Make sure this is enabled, highlighted orange, and then click Save. Once that's done, you're going to go to Human Temperature. And then you're going to note that there's at least five tabs here. The first thing you want to do is start with the human temperature measurement and then check the enable. Go to period and then make sure every day is set. By default, it's set for 24 hours and click save. Now, another thing that I want to mention here is uh, by default, this yellow rectangle here is not set here initially. It's going to be set around this border here. So during the setup, you're going to want to have a person standing next to the, uh, the black body that you see here that has a little green square. Now, where that person is standing is going to be dependent on where the path of walking is going to be. So in our example here, the path is on the side where the yellow rectangle is. So you're going to have a person standing right next to the black body, and then you're going to click Draw Rule, and then redrag and reshape this orange rectangle to where it fits the upper torso of the person, where it covers the chest and slightly above the head. Now keep in mind that every person is a different height and also a different width. So what you want to do is when you drag the rectangle, you want to leave a little slack to accommodate for different sizes and shapes and heights of different people. Okay. Once that's done, uh, you're going to check the temperature report and then also high temperature abnormal alarm because we're concerned about uh, fevers. So by default in Celsius, you're going to set it to the 37.3 degrees Celsius. Okay. Once that's done, you're going to go down here and you have a couple of options for different alarms. Now, you might be in a noisy environment where uh, there's a lot of noise and it's going to be very hard to hear any type of enunciation. So if that's the case, you can check audio linkage and then that will give you an option for an external alarm that's built into the camera itself to sound an alarm from the camera. Also, another option is to check the white light. It's a strobe light. So if you want to be, if the person does not want to hear an audio alarm, they can just see a strobe light as well. So you have that option here. You can select whether it's just a normally on light or if it's flickering. And also uh, you can select the frequency, how fast it flickers. Once that's done, you can hit save and you're done for this part of the setup. The next part of the setup is to go to the black body parameter. The black body is a, a module that's actually facing the camera from the opposite direction. This is a temperature reference module that's very easy to set up. It allows for the accuracy of the camera to be down to 0 0.3 degrees Celsius, which allows for a human body temperature, which makes it different from regular thermal cameras out in the market. So by default, what you want to do is draw the area first. Now this green rectangle, sorry, the green square here is not here by default. So you're going to have to redrag and reshape the size to where it covers the outer edges of this internal square here. Not the pink area, but the internal square here. This blue rectangle, you'll know it was from the previous setting from that yellow rectangle that covers the human area where the person is going to be walking through. You want to check the enable box. And the black body temperature is going to be set to 35 degrees Celsius by default. Now, when you first set up the black body, it's very simple. There's a power cable and there's a switch. Now, you turn it on. You let it run for about 20 to 30 minutes and it'll stabilize to 35 degrees Celsius, which, which is where that 35 degrees comes from. The black body distance is the distance from the black body to the camera, which is recommended to be three meters for accuracy. Now the 300 centimeters is three meters. So 100 meters, sorry, 100 centimeters is one meter. So when you set it on a tripod, the black body and the camera, you want to measure the distance from the center pole of the black body to the center pole of the camera. That's where you'll get your 300 centimeters or your three meters. The black body height will be from the base of the black body to the ground. So the 180 centimeters will be 1.8 meters. The camera height will be 200 centimeters from the base of the camera to the ground. So that's going to be two meters. Camera angle, you can leave at default at 15 degrees and then hit save. The smart channel you're going to set it to visual, 
and by default it's set to 90 degrees so you want to move that down to maybe around 70 degrees and then the crop images you can leave it to off and hit save for compensation settings since we are measuring the forehead of the person that's walking to the camera view then you want to select it to forehead thermometer and then hit save the other settings you have to be concerned about the ambient temperature that's going to be the temperature of where this camera system is going to be set up so what you can do is if the installer does not have a thermometer then what you can do is you can download an app on your phone and then that will give you the ambient temperature of that location so for example this setup here in our showroom the ambient temperature measure for my app was 15 degrees Celsius so that's what I use and I hit save once that's done you want to go to where it says temperature and go to global setup under global setup you want to enable temperature switch now after the firmware upgrade you're going to have an option for Celsius or Fahrenheit so it depends on what the customers preference is once that's set up then you want to select the skin temperature mode and then hit save